Hey y'all, so today I'm gonna see how fast I can do this because I actually have to go out and go into another city. Um, anyways, so I'm doing a face mask today, so I'm gonna use bentonite clay with this. See it? And uh, I'm doing what am I doing? So I'm just taking out one tablespoon. One tablespoon um, in a cup, in a <laughs> bowl here, and then some apple cider vinegar. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a little bit at a time until until I have the consistency that I want in the in the mix here. So. Just gonna add a little bit. Oh, it's foaming, it's foaming. So I'm just gonna mix it up. Ooh, ooh. All right, I think I need a little bit more. I never know the measurement, I never actually measured this. I just put enough to get the consistency that I want with the apple cider, with the bentonite clay. So I started doing this bentonite clay mask because of People uh, who is a constant uh, live streamer with us. And uh, she's been on the channel with me for a while too, for years, I think. And uh, yeah, she told me about doing a mask the other day when my, and my skin was breaking out. But I think I was breaking out because my I had a really high dos dosage of MSM for quite a bit. And... Uh, my skin was just like, nope, we're not having it. I think I put a little bit too much, but anyways, this is a consistency that I got for the bentonite clay and apple cider vinegar. So have you guys ever done this before? Have you ever done a bentonite clay mask and an apple cider, with, apples, with, with apple cider vinegar? Now, I've done this before with, uh, what do you call it? With water, um, bro, that thing will not mix properly at all. So it takes, it's really hard to mix. I'm gonna have to take off my glasses real soon because I can't do it with my glasses. Ah, ah, oh, my laptop. I should have put something down because I am a klutz. I'm so messy. I don't know how I'm going to do this because <laughs> this thing gets so tight on my face, I won't be able to talk. So I might have to cut this off before. Yeah, so I started off, I think I was using too high a dosage of MSM. Actually, no, I'll, I'll be honest, no. I was not taking MSM when I was in quarantine. So I did two weeks quarantine when I came back to China. And my skin was breaking out already. So I think, I don't know what it was, to be honest. I don't know. Maybe I wasn't getting enough sunlight. I went from being in Sri Lanka, getting sunshine all day long, every day, to being indoors and not getting any sunshine. So um, my skin was breaking out so badly. Like pimples everywhere. And um, yeah, so I mentioned it on my live one day. And people was like, do apple cider, sorry, do bentonite clay. What she did is she said, do it with water because you just want to clear up your skin. You don't actually want to detox it. But yo, it is so hard to do it with um with water. Like you can't mix this bentonite. It's so hard to mix. So anywho's, I did the first one with water. And after that, I did it with apple cider vinegar. And... Uh, Yeah, I think I prefer the apple cider vinegar and it's been clearing up my skin. So I do it like every week or every week or two, I do it. It's been a while since I did it actually, probably almost two weeks since I've done one. Um, Hey, people girl. My skin actually looks great. Yeah, it's clearing up a lot better. Now I have a little dry patch. I don't know if you can see. No, I can't see. 
<laughs> now, but I kind of probably covered it now, but there's a little dry patch that I was seeing this morning and I was like, you know what? Let me do a mask. And I was like, no, let me come on live and do the mask. So I actually was not going to do it because I, I have to get ready just now. I mean, I have enough time to get ready. I just don't want to be late as well. I don't want to be like stressed and rushing. I don't think I'll be late. I just will be rushing. Cool, I can't see your questions. I can't see crap. Oh, I can only see mask. Anyways, so yeah, people, this is because of you, girl. And then after I still after I did the mask, I did um I already I have done a bent and I clay mask on my hair before. But you know, sometimes you haven't done something in a long time, you have to research it again. So I went and researched using a bentonite clay my, on my hair, and I'm like, bro, why haven't I done, done this in a long time? Anyways, so I can do this without putting this in my eye, because I can't actually see what I'm doing. Then I don't want it in my hair, because this is so hard to get out of your hair. Anyways, I'm only, only going to leave this for 30 minutes. Yeah, I'm only gonna do it for 30 minutes and then I'm going to wash it off. Yo, if my cousin, if I tell my cousin <laughs> that I told this story about her, she's gonna kill me. But I told my cousin that, yeah, I did a face mask. This girl once and she did a face mask and uh, a face mask and one uh, hair mask with the bentonite clay. This girl left this thing in for four Hour. So I call her and I'm, I'm like, whoa, what's on your face? <laughs> what's on your face? And she's like, oh, I have a mask for four hours. And in my hair for four. I'm like, four hours? What's it do you for 13 minutes? I'm, I'm like, girl, you're going to have a hard time getting that out your hair. The next day, she's like, Ife, I'm still trying to wash this thing on my hair. Oh, my girl. It sucks to be you. But she's crazy. Y'all think I'm crazy? No, she's crazy. But I love her. She's my favorite cousin. Ooh, don't tell me other cousins that. Ooh, trouble. Fight. Yeah. Mm. Did I get it all, guys? Because I can't see. I cannot see. I really try not to get it in my hair. You want to see how my edges are coming in? Bro! Yo, you remember when I had a big ball patch hair? I was looking at pictures and I'm like, I need to post that picture on my community page. Yo, big ball patch hair. That thing is gone. And then what other one here is filling in. This, I had a big ball patch right here. Gone. It's like, it's finally growing out. And I'm actually not doing anything. <laughs> Oh, I used to try so hard. I used to be like fenugreek spray, rosemary spray, um, all sorts of craziness. Y'all, you know what I do at night? Well, this is not this is not even what I think is work was the reason why it's working. Um, I'll tell you what I think it is. Um, because I, I actually don't know for sure. I'm just I'm speculating. Um, but I've been I don't do it every night, maybe every other night. I would just spray with regular water. And I just use some shea butter with some Ayurveda. Um, some of the Ayurveda mix in it for my oil. Anyway, so I'm I just um just I just spray my my ed edge and just brush it back. I only do that because in the morning it's easier. It's easier to lay the edges down because if I don't lay it down, you could actually tell there's like a, a ring of hair that's short and growing out. But it's growing out. I think it's like an inch already. An inch in about a month. About a month and a half, I think I got an inch. Of hair growth on my edges alone so my hair is like it's doing well so what i think um what am i speculating it to be i really think it's because i'm getting okay so first of all i've had a lot of hair loss for a lot of years right for those who don't don't know some of you know it already because you've been watching did i get it all guys no i kind of missed a spot here because i cannot see without my glasses i cannot see anything so um oh i thought i would have had enough to put under my armpits to detox my armpits 
I really want to do an armpit detox to like remove some of the metals and stuff. So anyways, um, what do I think it is? You'll post any questions you'll have in the meantime. I'll get to it when I can see, I can squint. Uh, yeah. No, I, th I definitely think it has to do with getting my blood sugar under control. So ever since I've been fasting and stuff, fasting and doing keto, so I've always been doing low carb, but I've mixed it with keto, genetic diet, and I've been doing the fasting. So I think that um, now my body, my, my blood has lower levels of sugar. Now it can actually repair any parts of my body and stuff that uh, have been, what was it? Okay, so I don't want to, I need to read, I need to check this clearly, but I think when you have a high level of sugar in your blood, you have lower levels of hemoglobin. And hemoglobin is, is necessary for carrying oxygen in your blood. Now, if you have low levels of oxygen in your blood, that means your your body can't function the way it should, right? Let me see if I could Google that real fast without like, coming too close to you because <laughs> I can't see. Um, anyways, so that's what I speculate. Let me see, let me see, let me see. Um, ah, here we go. Okay, so someone wrote here, does blood sugar affect hemoglobin? The higher your blood sugar, the more sugar you will end will enter the red blood cell and will attach to the hemoglobin. Let me see if I can find the... Let me see if I can find... Ah! Let me see if I can find the article. So low hemoglobin concentration in patients with diabetes is associated with a more rapid decline in filtration rate. Man, and then anemia. I was anemic as well. So that's not that does not happen. So I'm up on my iron meds too. So iron, zinc. Um so, anyways, I will research this later, but but uh, a lot of these things that are wrong with my body, it's I feel as though I'm finally getting in balance with my health by controlling my blood sugar. Something as simple as that, controlling my blood sugar. Now, that's the other thing too. I was going to do the A1C test. So the A1C test is what I had done last year to find out how, um, to find out if I had diabetes. And that's how I, I was like, oh, I have diabetes. <laughs> well, after doing the test, oh, my, my nose is itchy right here. Yeah. So um, the A1C test, so it basically checks the uh, amount of blood sugar that attaches to hemoglobin in the last three months. So I did a test last year, found out I had diabetes, did it again in December, found out I dropped from going diabetic, from being diabetic to pre-diabetic. Now, I messaged my doctor a couple of weeks ago telling her that I want to do another test um, to do my A1C. So uh she was like oh my gosh I'm, I'm at another clinic i'm a new clinic now so it's going to be ex really expensive to do that just that one test she's like is that the only thing you want to do so i was like you know what i really want to find out how much like how much my blood sugar has changed so i'm like i don't mind paying the money to find out right and i'm and honest to be honest what they consider really expensive not expensive. I'm like, if you all know how much we pay in the West, <laughs> it's not expensive. But um, and it's the way she's coming from. It was really just didn't it didn't make sense to just do that one test for a consult. I have to pay. I have to pay a consultation fee. Then I have to pay for the test. And rush like it doesn't make sense. So yesterday, when I was watching a video, what was I watching a video about? Some girl. Oh, somebody emailed me about some mi mineral min miracle or something. They were like, Ife, um, I think it's Nia, her name is T, just T or something. She emailed me. And in the email, she's like, oh my gosh, I've been watching you for years. And I wanted, I found out, I saw that you have diabetes. And she's concerned that I'm fasting and doing keto and stuff. And if I had ever heard about this mineral, miracle, miracle, whatever. So I researched it. I Googled it, checked on YouTube. 
and then no, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> the person's just doing celery juice. I'm like, bro, I need food. So, um, yeah. So anyways, one of the videos I was watching talking about the mineral miracle protocol or whatever they call it. She had talked about um, doing the A1C. She talked about doing um, checking her ovaries for cysts. And then she also talked about doing a liver checking, doing an ultrasound for fatty liver disease. And I'm like, that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to do, so I messaged my doctor and asked her, can you do these three tests for me? I want to check it out. Never since I found out that I had cysts on my ovaries back in 2008, 2008, I have never done a test again to check my ovaries. And since I've been fasting, I'm like, bruh. That's what I'm going to do. Oh, this is the other video I was watching. I was watching a podcast on Diet Doctor. Diet Doctor YouTube channel too. He was also talking to a doctor who does Jason Fung's fasting protocol and stuff. And oh, I didn't check the time to see what time I started. Oh, I need to, only need to wait this for 30 minutes. Maybe, maybe 15 more minutes. Anyways. Yeah, so I'm going to do those three tests. I'm going to do my A1C. Usually when you have diabetes, especially I've had, I, my eyes, your eyes deteriorate based on a high blood sugar level. My eyes deteriorated since I was 11 years old. And that's a long time ago. So, I'm just saying. so um, that was 20 something years ago, basically. And so that means my body has been showing signs of high blood sugar a long time ago, a long time. So um, that's one thing that I found that I had diabetes. I found that I was pre-diabetic in 2008. So, and obviously it was there a long time before. And there were there are actually things on my skin. Like I used to have, get these rashes on my skin all the time that or indications that I had high blood sugar. My, my body was actually giving me signs for a long, long time. Anyways, my point is, is that there's a chance that I've had, hopefully I don't have it anymore, fatty liver disease. Now, I am skinny on the outside. That's what you call skinny on the outside, fat on the inside. My organs must have been covered in fat. So... Because a lot one of the questions a lot of my friends would be like, oh, how do you have diabetes? You're so skinny. As if being skinny is like an indicator for not having diseases like that, you know. And then I have friends who are overweight or obese and stuff, and they don't have diabetes. But that doesn't mean you won't get it. That doesn't mean you're not at risk of getting it if you continue having eating poorly, you know. So anyways, um, my point is saying, well, this I'm going to do A1C, gonna check, I'm gonna ask for, an, I'm gonna get an ultrasound. She said I can do all these tests. I'm gonna get an ultrasound on my liver to see how it is behaving since I've been fasting. That should help reverse the fatty liver disease. And the last test I'm gonna do is an ultrasound on my, I hope it's an ultrasound because I heard a different ways of checking if you have cysts in your ovaries. Well, ultrasound is fine. I've done an ultrasound before just to find out if I have cysts, and that's how I found out anyways. So I'm going to do an ultrasound on my ovaries to find out if I still have cysts on my ovaries. That would be amazing to find out because I've not done a test since, and I don't know if I still have cysts on my ovaries. I don't know. I think I still do, though, because I still get, like, these heavy mood swings just before my period, and I get... Um, a lot of pain on my ovaries on the day my period comes. So it could be endometriosis, though, as one of you guys were telling me the other day. You could you could have endo endometriosis? Okay, let me see what y'all are saying. I can't see. Yeah, my skin. I think it's um definitely helping. I'm back on my MSM regularly too, but I'm, I'm on a lower dosage as well. You're sleepy in a pinch. Use apple cider juice. Apple juice. Uh, what do you do instead of MSM? Can't get it here. You can use collagen. There, um, I think they have similar benefits. Not all the same benefits, but um, 
they work similarly to help your hair, your skin, your nails. And uh, so collagen, you can try that. I, I read that if you take MSM, you don't need to take collagen. It's not a big need. Um, so I think collagen. What do you guys think? Is collagen okay instead of MSM? Guys, I can't see. <laughs> um, let's go African I have a picture of myself with a mask. And <laughs> hey, Kawana, what's up, girl? I do. That would be a tea spray scalp. Hi. Hi, Moni J. What's up? Uh, okay, I'm silly. Spent the last two minutes gagging. Turns out the Vita Cray. Oh, you are you okay, girl? <laughs> oh my god. You have type 1 diabetes? Oh my god. Are you allergic to raspberry? Oh my god. Sorry, I was laughing. That wasn't funny. You. Are you okay, people? <laughs> guys my face is getting stiff i can't laugh properly anymore um natural beauty says looking good as always and never know what i'm gonna get when i tune into <laughs> that's so funny that's so funny um so if you're only live so i'll tell you a little something i will come on again tomorrow actually so tomorrow I'll do something else. I know what I'm going to do. So tomorrow, it's not quite wash day, but um, we got four. So we worked nine days. We got one day off in the middle. Well, yeah, in the middle. And uh, we got four days off, which is my normal schedule. T sorry, actually 10 days working and then four days off. But I don't know what miracle happened. And we got nine days and then four days off. Anyways, I started working on Sunday's Friday. I started working on Sunday. Again, we actually don't know how long our work week will be. If it'll be 10 days, will it be 15 days? Our first work week back after the epidemic, well, ended here. Um, when the kids returned, our work week was 20 days. I know. I don't even know how I... I nine days I was tired. 20 days. I don't even know how I did it. I, I just went day by day. Didn't think of the 20. I just went like, okay, I made it through today. Let's do tomorrow. <laughs> I made it through today. Let's do tomorrow. That, that's how I worked. Um, then we got uh, five days off. We got six days. We got six days off? I think we got six days off. I can't remember now. So anyways, my work week starts on Sunday again. Um, but I want to do my hair. I want to wash my hair tomorrow, even though I literally washed my hair a few days ago. Uh, but I prefer to wash it before seven days is up because I don't know how or when I will be able to wash my hair again. So I'm going to do a hair mask live with you guys tomorrow. So for those who never know when I'm coming on live again, tomorrow I'm coming on again. I don't know what time. Whenever I wake up. I'm sorry, guys. Whenever I wake up. <laughs> because today is going to be a very busy day. Today I am going to have to get ready just now. Give me 10, 10 more minutes with this mask and I'm going to wash it off. How long I put it on with you guys? Yeah, about 10 more minutes. That's okay. I can't speak. My mouth is getting stiff. All right. So today, today's schedule. So we're going to a city nearby. This city has amazing food. It's one of the most diverse cities in China because it's where most of the trade happens. I'm not going to call the city because stalkers be stalking my ex. So uh, in this city, you can almost... Every nationality lives there. And because of that, they have like tons of restaurants from different places around from around the world. If you want Pakistani food, Indian food, Muslim food, Turkish food, Arabic food, like you is there, is there such a thing as, as Arabic food? Arabian food? Muslim food? Okay, guys, I'm sorry if I'm offending anyone. But you can get anything. You get African food, there's Ethiopian restaurants, Ghanaian restaurants, Nigerian restaurants. Oh my gosh, the food is so diverse there. Mexican restaurants. So anyways, we're going there. Um, a group of us from work, actually my whole department, <laughs> my whole department being four. So only four teachers made it back. Well, one of them, he stayed here the entire time from January. When we were, so, so we got January holiday. Everybody left. He stayed. 
and uh, to save money and the crisis hit and he got stuck here in China. He got locked down. Literally, like the day before, he decided to, he was thinking about leaving. The very next day, they shut down the whole, they shut down the whole city. They couldn't leave their apartments. They couldn't leave school. They couldn't leave this. Well, we live on campus. So they shut down. Literally, you could not leave. Your, you couldn't leave your apartment building. That's tell you how bad it was. So anyways, he stayed. I returned from Sri Lanka, another co-worker, he returned from Ghana, and another co-worker, she was in Thailand at the time, and she returned. So literally, my whole department is four people. Out of our entire department is 15 people. Yeah. 11 people did not make it back. This will tell you, like, it's crazy. My whole department is just a mess now. So anyways, four of us, we kind of bond, do like bonding activities once in a while. So all of us are going to go to that city and have lunch together. We're actually going to do something else, but we're going to get lunch as well after we sort out some stuff there. And then we're going to, we were supposed to go for massages um, in another city, but then we, we found out news that there might be a lockdown again. So I don't know. I don't know. Not a lockdown, but if we go to a, a city, we might have to get tested again and get quarantined. So I don't think we're going to go. So we're going to go to get massages, then come back. And then tonight I'm supposed to um, go hang out with my other coworkers. So in total on campus, out of 60 something student teachers who were originally here before the crisis, um, only 20 of us are left. <laughs> yeah, so basically 40 something teachers never made it back to the school and foreign teachers never made it back. And anyway, so some of us, we kind of made a group in our social media thing and we're all gonna hang out tonight. So we try to hang out whenever we get a break, we try to hang out to kind of keep connected. And you know, you know what I love about it is that usually we would, before the crisis last year, we would hang out in our little groups, but it's usually based on our department because our departments are so big. You make friends in your department and you hang out with your department, but now it's like, the departments are so fragmented that some departments have such few people that we all trying to come together and hang out. But what I love about it is that it's people who would have never hung up before, when, who, were, who would have never spent time together before. We're all spending time together and we're good for drinks tonight. But you know me, I don't really drink. But that's the other thing. Oh, my gosh. So anyway, I'm looking forward to it. So that's the other thing, too. Um, me, I hang out. I can go out. I can go party. I've always been like that. Always been like that. And I don't think... Okay, let me explain this. So growing up, <laughs> my mom used to be like, yo, you come, you going out all the time and you drinking. I'm like, this woman didn't realize. Like, she didn't realize. Yeah, I used to be hungover the next day, but I used to be hungover from not sleeping. <laughs> so she used to think I used to be going and going out and drinking the nights away. I used to be going out Drinking kind of cranberry juice all night. You know when the cranberry juice was a big thing to drink cranberry juice? That's what I... I used to go to the club and we... I'm the kind of person, I can hang out, I could party. I, people think I'm drunk sometimes. No, I'm just... I'm high on life. I could party, have a good time. And people don't understand it. No matter where I go in the world. I hang out in Montenegro. I was in Sri Lanka. I was in Serbia. I was in Greece. I was partying all the time and people were like, you're not drinking. I don't need to drink to have a good time. And it bothers people more that I don't drink than it bothers me. I don't understand. So anyways, since I've been hanging out with my group of friends, well, my coworkers here now, who are my friends now, every time we hang out, they're like, you're not drinking. I'm like, bruh. And no matter where I am in the world, I think it's, it, that is the one thing that is common around the world. No matter where I go, whatever country I'm in, no matter what nationality I encounter, people don't feel comfortable with me not drinking or they're not comfortable with... some. I think it's, they're not comfortable with somebody being sober while they're pissing drunk. <laughs> I think that's what it is. I mean, it's so tight right now. Yeah. So, because I remember all the stories the next day, which is perfect for me because I get a good laugh. <laughs> And they don't remember half the stories or half the things that happened the night before. But anyways, it bothers them more than it bothers me that I don't drink. So anyways, so that's going to be a question again tonight. I don't know, like, especially now that I fast a lot and I do keto, I actually, it's not that I don't drink at all. And that's the other thing that people are con 
like confused by they think I do not drink at all. I just pick and choose when I'm drinking. If I drink a beer, it's like I know I didn't have much carbs that week or much carbs that day, so I will have a beer, fine, whatever. But if I know, uh, and it's the other thing too, because I fast and I do keto, you actually get drunk much, much faster. So when I did drink the other day, I went to a wedding and I was like, hey, let's live it up. So I was drinking, I was drinking wine. I drank everything, which was the op, which is crazy. <laughs> I drank wine, I drank rice wine, red wine, their baijiu, um, which is like punching. It's like, whew, that's, that was strong. And I was like shot, and I was like shot, shot, shot. So you get drunk very, very fast, very fast. So yeah, no, drinking is no, no. Anyways, that was a little story for you guys, a long, long story. My body tolerates collagen much better than MSM. Sorry, I cannot see, I need my glasses. I can't, I can't see guys. <laughs> um, mm, okay, yeah. That's fine. I think for some people, MSM, is it 10 minutes yet? Oh, two more minutes. Um, I think for some people, MSM is, um, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't, they react to it. It's either they, they, their dosage is too high or, or they don't, excuse me, they're not drinking enough water. And that's the thing with MSM, you have to drink a lot of water to help push the toxins out and stuff. So, I also still need to make breakfast. Oh my God, I need to go. Yeah, I'm still in China. Um, I came back. Um, I returned to China on the 23rd of March. Yeah, there's no, there's, there's nowhere to go, guys. There's, if you're in China, you're pretty much going to be here for a while because there's nowhere to go. If you, if you go anywhere right now, you're going to have to be quarantined. I can't go home because I can't even imagine the amount of flights, the cost of flights to get back home. And I can't go home because the borders are still closed as far as I know for nationals and non-nationals. So I can't even go home if I wanted to. That's how I feel so it's written on label, big natural favors with a picture. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's a huge reduction in manpower. Luckily, my schedule is the same, thankfully. What they did, what did they do? Oh, so what happens is, um, a lot of the teachers who never return is in my department, not all departments, this is happening, but in my department, a lot of the teachers who did not return, they're teaching on their teaching live in the classroom. So they had they set up a camera and stuff, they call in via Zoom. And they teach the kids. There's a Chinese teacher or teaching teaching assistant who assists with printing worksheets and stuff, or printing or helping out in any way with assignments and um, with uh, yeah, just making sure the kids are on task while the teacher is teaching live. So it's as if the teacher is there, it's just that the teacher is live. So um, then I think some teachers who are not able to be live because of the time difference they would record their sessions before and then it would just play in the class for 40 minutes or whatever, so. Yeah, glad you're okay, but that Benadryl will probably knock you out soon. Hey, you're going through pandemics. Okay, you didn't see what was written on the bottle. See you later, people. Have a good rest. Oh, gosh, that, yeah, that Benadryl kicking fast. Sorry, I never had Benadryl, but Benadryl is for allergic reactions, right? Okay. Oh, I still had some. I could have put this under my armpits. Next time. All right. Okay. Oh, two minutes up. All right, guys. Let me go. Because I need to wash this off my face. I need to make breakfast. I need to take a shower. I need to get dressed. Okay, bye. <laughs> All within um, 45 minutes. Okay, bye. See you guys. Have a, have a good evening. Uh, good night. And then tomorrow we will come on. I will do a hair mask with you. Okay. Bye.